Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of this disease series. And today we're going to be talking about black rot, a very, very dangerous common disease, and especially in very warm and humid regions where people have vineyards. And uh, well, I'll leave that pronunciation of the species to you. But to start talking a bit about black rot, it's obviously a fungus. And um, here's a couple of reasons why we should think about monitoring it. First, it's a very insidious disease. What does that mean? It means it acts in a very subtle way. So your plant might be infected throughout the growing season and you won't realize it before it's too late. Uh, and for that reason, I believe, and obviously researchers do believe, and plant pathologists do believe as well, that prevention and sanitation is crucial. Um, things can get obviously out of control, especially if we realize it when it's too late. So that plays a big part in the prevention and in the control of a possible outbreak, especially when it comes to organic vineyards. Um, so they call it as well the Achilles heel of organic viticulture. And that's because most of the um, treatments allowed by organic viticulture are considered ineffective against black rod. They're not, obviously, they're somehow a bit effective, but not 100%. And that can be, that can be concerning to, to growers in general, because if you have, obviously, black rod, and you're managing your vineyard organically, you might as well just, you know, uh, abandon your philosophy. And that could be a serious issue for someone who tried to follow this, obviously, philosophy of production. So to begin talking about a bit about the disease cycle and going into winter dormancy, there are two sources of spore-bearing organs. So there's a source of primary infection, which is the mummified fruit, obviously mummified grapes. They're present on soil, on trellis, or even in the, in, in the vines themselves that we may forget, like someone probably just forgot to cut that one off during harvest, or even if, if, the, if the harvest is done automatically and mechanically, obviously there are some uh, bunches that can be left out and that can contribute to create a source of infection for the grapevine. And also cane lesions and leaves can be as well sources of infection for, in this case, for secondary infections throughout the growing season. So if you remember a primary infection would be in case if your vineyard is healthy and is not infected, while the secondary infection needs a primary effect, infection to occur so it can later spread to the other healthy vines. So as you can see here, the, the black rot does overwinter in mummified fruit, whether again on soil, on the trellis, or in the vines themselves in the form of pseudothecia. And this pseudothecia is the source of what we call ascospores, while the pycnidia is the source of what we would call pycnidiospores or conidia. Um, for that to happen, obviously, we do need optimal temperature and, uh, uh, and black rot ends up being a disease like downy mildew and also bathritis, which means they do need free moisture, rainfall, and wet conditions in order to develop. As I said before, humid and warm. So it likes temperature, high temperature, and a lot of humidity. Um, so how does that, what, what, what does it happen like with the, um, with the transmission? Um, as you can see here in this, this graphic, ascospores are carried by wind, while canidia are carried by rain. So canidia do need and do, do need uh, free water in order to, um, to successfully infect other vines. However, both of them, also the Psidothecia and the Pycnidia, they both need rain in order to de discharge both the Ascospores and the Canidia. So 
depending on the time of the season when that occurs, they might be able to infect fruit. Um, if you already have fruit development, they can also infect other, obviously, green tissue like canes and leaves, um, which will later create more pycnidia in this case that will then release more canidia when it rains and it will keep going on and on and on infecting your grapevine the other grapevines both tissue green tissue and also fruit um, as i said this this disease is incredibly insidious so as the ascospores are the overwintering uh let's say form of infection um in this case when it comes well obviously infections in general it, it could take between eight to 25 days for, for the grower to start seeing the first symptoms, which means you can have a grapevine that is infected and you, only, you can only see that in certain cases only after a month. So that's why it's incredibly dangerous, this disease. Um, obviously, in this case, for the disease, disease development to occur, as we talk, the temperature here needs to be between 15 degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Celsius, obviously optimal between 2027. And the leaves have to be wet in order for the inoculation to occur. Uh, obviously, that depending, that depending on temperature. When the temperature is optimal, the last time uh, the, 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 the fungus needs to, obviously, to enter the leaf stomates and infect the grapevine. And as you know, and as I mentioned before, they both need rainfall for transmission and spore discharge. So what is the role of TerraView in all this? We have, we have specific issues. Obviously, as I mentioned before, the first one is called sanitation. Prevention is absolutely essential. And how can we guarantee that a primary infection won't occur? So as you know, and knowing the life cycle of the black rot, we know that the primary sources of inoculum are present in mummified fruit. So the solution could be having obviously canopy modeling to ID those sources to identify whether there's mummified fruit in the trellis, in the canopy during, I mean, obviously during that period fall winter, which is like obviously crucial to implement prevention practices. That's one of them. Also, another, another issue is related to that insidious behavior that could prevent, I mean, that could obviously cause uh, huge yield losses and devastating effects because, well, if we notice it and it's too late, there, there won't be much we could do. So to do that, obviously the integration of disease models is very important to know if there is a risk of infection and where we stand as far as the grow, uh, as the life cycle of this disease is concerned, to later obviously help help us optimize fungicide applications, and we do this by monitoring weather data, um, rainfall, temperature, relative humidity, so we know when it's time to spray, and uh, obviously do that with a lot of efficiency to reduce costs for growers and obviously the impacts of this insidious disease. Well, that obviously includes my presentation for Black Rod. I hope you enjoyed it. For feedback, again, don't hesitate to send me an email and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.